Hey everybody, this is Rick Bidcock, and I just wanted to share a few thoughts about this, uh, the attack on the Capitol that happened this week on uh, January 6th, 2021, and um, specifically about one particular phrase that I have heard quite a few people say. Um, I've heard people on both sides of the aisle say this, Republicans and Democrats. I've heard uh, President-elect Joe Biden say this, and um, it's, it's, it's basically the idea that um, they'll say, this is not who we are. And, um, and then I'll, I'll hear, on the other side, I'll hear some people from marginalized communities say, hey, this is who we are. Um, we, we need to come to grips with that. And, and so there's this, this question about human identity that I think is, is really, um, we're wrestling with. Uh, perhaps subconsciously, and um, I want to name that, and then explore some of uh, my thoughts related to that, specifically within the context of uh, not only American politics, but also through the stories of Genesis 1 through 3. And I think that it has some some uh, ideas in there that, that we definitely need to to consider that uh, would be good for us to consider. So, um, so this is not who we are. Who are we? What is our human identity? Um, it, traditionally, for for you know hundreds of years since since Saint Augustine, Christians have often had this theology called original sin, and basically, it's this idea that in Adam who many Christians have believed is the first human, and I'm not going to get into science here and, and trying to get into all that stuff, but just for the sake of the story, um, that, that Adam, you know, broke this law in the garden, and, and then his descendants have inherited his, uh, his guilt um, through being born uh, from generation to generation. And... And so, like, what is what is true about us uh, to to this according to this tradition is that we are or we are sinful and guilty, and and so therefore they talk about how there needs to be a solution to that, and that's that Jesus came and and paid the penalty for our sin as a reaction to the the sinfulness that affected all of creation, and. While that is true, that there is, uh, in Genesis 3, it talks about uh, Adam making a, a wrong decision. There, um, I think there's, there's something much deeper going on in the story than a doctrine of original sin. In, in, in some Christian tradition, there has also been a focus on, okay, well, what, what's what's truer of us at more of a deeper level. Um, in, in Genesis 1, when it talks about God creating man and woman on the sixth day, it says that uh, God called them very good. Not just good, but very good. And so for, for many traditions, uh, Christian traditions, with, especially within like Franciscan uh, Christian theology, there's a deeper original goodness that that yes we need to acknowledge um what is where we have gone wrong um but w there's also a deeper goodness in our human identity that we're if we keep pushing into it we'll, we'll discover that deeper goodness and and so specifically in american politics um i heard somebody the other day on an upcoming documentary um and i'll, I'll paraphrase this so i may get it wrong um, but they said that the original sin of America is um, is white supremacy, as shown through uh, slavery and taking of land in the pursuit of capitalistic power. And I think that's a great illustration of the concept of original sin because it's something that happened um, began with the first generations of settlers, white settlers in in America. Um, it was, these were very serious sins that they perpetrated against their Native American neighbors and against, um, you know, the slaves. 
and you see the the effects of this sin handed down from generation to generation we we see it now in you know mass incarceration of specifically men within the black community we see a lot of of um issues that are built into the systems that we have created in america um that have come down from throughout the generations in, in much much like the the narrative around original sin is and yet um deeper than that i do believe that as humans there is this desire for wholeness there is this um this uh there's something in our in our bones in in our heart in our minds that desire wholeness and you know one thing that going back to the genesis one to three thing like people biblical scholars have have seen have discovered recently a lot of over the last couple hundred years a lot of parallels between the genesis one to three story and the babylonian story um where israel was taken into exile and so you know they have reason to believe that however however old you think these original stories were uh put together um or you know passed down verbally that ultimately they were they were uh they were put together in their current form closer to the babylonian exile and so what israel was doing was they were they were processing their wounds of exile they were saying like this is we wanted this this land this temple this king uh you know ruling identity in this in this land but um but we've been exiled from our garden and so what israel was doing in writing genesis 1 to 3 was processing their wound of exile of being cut off from their wholeness and their wonders and their dreams um through the mythical stories of 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 their tribe in contrast to the the tribe that had taken them into exile and so i think that's really in a lot of ways what's going on here we have republicans and democrats and family members and friends who feel very exiled from one another they feel taken away from their 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 dreamland that that has you know a a land a, a a temple where they can see spiritual significance in this and also a king where they, they have power to to rule and um in in that land and temple and and i think what we're we're feeling is that feeling of exile and and so we need to acknowledge that that's that that sin concept of that's that sin concept of Genesis 3. But by pressing into that, we need to develop a, a theology that doesn't just react to that, but that pushes deeper to find the deeper wholeness. And so there's, within Franciscan Christian theology, there's also a tradition where, that says, regarding the incarnation, that, that God did not come as a reaction to sin, but that God would have always come to be a human as an overflow of love. It's, it's, it's because God wanted to identify and be a part of his good creation as an overflow of love that the incarnation happened. And so um, with that, you do deal with the, the exiles and the wounds that we have, but you do it more so from an overflow of wholeness and um and that is ultimately what this universe is it's it's wholeness becoming greater wholeness uh, through greater depth complexity and union and so um i don't have all the political answers for us but i think we need to um we need to understand the context of what's going on here that we are exiled from one another that we are exiled from within ourselves and that the solution is not to react by retributively punishing the other side but the solution is to dig deeper into this feeling of exile until we find that seed of goodness in ourselves and in our neighbors and then converge together 
and and so that the wholeness that we desire within ourselves will also become a wholeness between us and our neighbors to create an even deeper, more complex, unified wholeness as a community.